Hi, this is Dr. Rudramohan and through the Oral Health Channel today we are going to be talking about Sialolithiasis. Let's start. So Sialolithiasis is actually a salivary gland disorder. If we break down the word uh, Sialolithiasis into Sialo and Lithiasis, Sialo means salivary gland or salivary related and lith Lithiasis means lith means rock. So basically it is the formation of a stone in either of the salivary glands or in the ductal system of the salivary glands which can cause pain and discomfort to you in the form of tender swelling while eating this syndrome is known as mealtime syndrome and any sort of salivary stimulation be it sight uh, you know the sound or the thought of food that stimulates saliva secretion because of the obstruction present can cause you painful tender swellings and other symptoms as well. So Sialolithiasis the causes basically it's very simple if you want to go down to the ground reality it's basically a sort of calcification that happens either in the gland or in the ductal system. Now the pathogenesis that means how this happens is very simple there are a lot of causes the exact cause is not known but the mucinous secretions especially in the submandibular gland and its duct are much more alkaline and have a higher pH at the same time have a higher content of uh, calcium. Now what happens is usually it has been correlated either due to the presence of a foreign body in the duct system or any sort of bacterial infection in the system or any sort of uh, reduction in the flow rate of the ductal system and the gland it leads to salivary stasis and what happens is that the contents of the saliva that is such as calcium and phosphate they coalesce to form a small crystal and that forms a nidus and out around which the nidus uh, the crystallization happens and that forms into a stone and obstructs the gland or the salivary duct. So <clears throat> basically typically a patient would probably have symptoms such as painful tender swelling especially around meal times and that would uh, lead to a lot of discomfort and other things such as dehydration and bad breath and other things. So how do we diagnose it? It's very simple. We will probably take a brief history about what happens and how it happens and we can take radiographs to see that where is the location of the calcified stone. Usually these are radio opaque so they can be observed on radiographic images. At the same time we can do a sialography that is a gold standard of you know diagnosing it where we inject a radio opaque dye at the same time which we can find out that wherever the obstruction is present and if at all there is some sort of modification in the duct. Now submandibular gland, the glands that below your you know jawbone that those two glands basically the pair of glands that are present they have it more common as an occurrence of sialolithiasis because of the fact that the glands duct system is very long, tortuous and thin and that's why because of any sort of pathology that might be happening the salivary flow rate can reduce and because of the tortuous thing there is a high like propensity of calcium and phosphate and calcium and carbonates to coalesce together to form a calculi that means a salivary stone or a sialolith. The treatment lies in removing of the stone it's very simple if the stone is smaller sized it is expected to be spontaneously expressed however if the stone is larger in diameter round or elongated and wedged between the walls of the duct it is better to go for a surgical intervention such as marsupialization or explorative incision to see where we can locate the stone and with the help of surgery we can remove the stone part. At the same time we can go for lithotripsy which can be laser guided as well and you can break the stone into smaller fragments and it can be expelled out spontaneously. In very rare cases we might have to remove the submandibular gland if that is the case if there is a lot of involvement and there is a lot of recurrence happening especially with deep seated stones in the submandibular gland so we might have to remove the submandibular gland. The conservative manage ba management is basically around anti-inflammatory medications and antibiotics depending upon the symptoms and any other sort of infections that are present with other symptoms in the body. So this was today's episode please like share and subscribe and do press the bell icon button for important updates. Please write your comments in the comment section uh, talking about your queries, apprehensions and any sort of feedback. At the same time, if you want to get in touch with me, here are my social media handles. However, I would humbly request you not to call me directly. Please drop me a message so that within whatever I can get time, whenever I can get time, I might be busy with patients or otherwise, I will get back to you. So that's it for today. Thank you.